Hello, this is a little bit of a different video. I want to title this like cozy recharge or cozy burnout recovery vlog <laughs> because today I just want to bring you along as I do some creative things, creative personal projects of my own unrelated to any shop or Patreon or whatevers because I, you know, if I'm being very honest, I'm a little burnt out and I just wanted to take some time to chill and recharge and like also document that. I like vlogging, honestly. I've really grown to love vlogging and documenting my life and not every vlog has to be me showing you a new hobby or me making a new thing. I make a lot of things and some of that stuff goes on my shop and some of it, you know, is just for me and that is the theme of this video today, just for me. I started this off showing you guys my New York City spread in my journal and I am just super excited about it. It's really cute. Again, I have been feeling really burnt out lately and a huge epiphany that I had recently when it comes to like my own art making in general is that I get a lot of inspiration just from my life. My life has become very cozy over the last year or so and I really love spending time with my partner and my friends and family and I, you know, I, I get a lot of inspiration from like small cozy moments I have with them and so I thought detailing out this journal entry would you know uplift my mood and stuff and it definitely has like i love looking back at all of these memories but yeah um there are a couple other things i want to do that have been kind of just on my list of to do's like i am making my boyfriend a crochet bucket hat he was very like supportive of me making the apple hat that i 
crochet in my last video. Honestly, since I did learn how to crochet, he has been wanting one. So I was like, okay, well now I know I can do it. Um, I'll make you one. <laughs> this is one of the granny squares from the hat I'm going to make him. And oh man, it looks so pretty on camera. <laughs> I was so unsure of the colors because I was concerned that the purple might be a little bit too dark, but I really like how it looks. I had him try it on and it was too small, so I need to actually make an additional granny square and sew it all together today. So I'll be doing a little bit of that. And then somewhat of an announcement. I have been a little bit frustrated with my shop over the past few months, which is why I have not dropped anything new because I've been because I've been really conflicted about what I want to offer in my shop. I feel like I can finally articulate exactly like the frustration that I've had when it comes to my shop. And if you've been with me for a while, you may know about my toy Sad Serve. If not, in 2022, I made a toy called Sad Serve. This was when I was still doing character design or pursuing character design professionally, and I wanted to make something that was like really stand out. I didn't want to be overlooked because I largely have felt overlooked in the animation industry thus far. I'm grateful for my career as a compositor, but it wasn't really what I was seeking out of my career. So one day I decided to make this toy Sad Serve and it was partially due to my burnout at that time even and also because I felt like if I made this toy I showed like the conception to you know final design three-dimensionally it was something that no art director executive could overlook. It's like a huge accomplishment for me. And it was in that, you know, simply that. It was like me taking an idea to full realization. And also at the time I was very bored with my art. I was mainly just doing character turnarounds and like trying to flesh out my portfolio so I could finally get hired as this designer. Then over time I got very bored <laughs> doing those turnarounds and I still like making characters but I just had no desire to keep drawing like turn sheets and expression sheets of them and that is also part of the decision of like making sad serve into a toy but after I made him into like a physical thing I just became very disillusioned with drawing like 2d things and I have been wanting to make my own physical figures it is partially why I got this 3d printer that has kind of just been sitting for a while 3D printing is like such a conundrum to me and I am slowly learning my way, but slowly. So in essence, I have really wanted to just try to take my work from 2D to 3D and to tie all of that back into my shop, I feel kind of bored doing stickers and stuff, stickers and keychains and flat 2D dimensional work. So for the past couple of months, I've been trying to you know, figure out what could my shop look like if it wasn't so geared around my 2D artwork. I've been watching YouTubers like Sugar Cafe Charms and Uncomfy, and I really love their clay creations, but to be honest, I've never been all that great at 3D stuff, and I think that has been largely my hesitation to making 3D stuff. After a couple months of just failing and trying and like trying to YouTube university my way through learning how to be a clay artist, I finally just decided to pick up this Klutz clay charm kit because honestly, I love craft kits for kids. They're so simple, they're so easy to follow and it, you know, you can end up making something really cute and like learning the entire process of whatever hobby or craft you're trying to get into. I'm thinking after I finish up my granny square for my partner, I am going to dive into this and see where this takes me because I have been dying to open this up for a little bit. Funny story, um, this was an Amazon delivery and the driver 
oh my gosh, I felt so bad for her. It's a nightmare to get into our neighborhood sometimes. And so she ends up like having an accident in front of the neighborhood, which, oh my gosh, I felt really bad for her. And she calls me and she tells me she's having trouble. And like, I tell her like, hey, don't even worry about delivering it. I think this woman like got out of her car and like came and hand delivered it. And I was like, you did not have to do that. You just were on the phone with me and had an entire accident and like you still found a way to deliver the this package. I even told her it was not essential, but she ended up delivering it for me. And then I was like, dang, I wish there was an option to tip you. And if anybody knows if there's an option to tip your drivers, like let me know because yeah, I, sh I really genuinely feel like so bad sometimes getting things delivered here. But anyway, that aside, today's gonna be a cozy, recharge, crafty day where I just do things with no expectation for them to come out nice and just vibe, no pressure to review anything, just make some stuff and bring you guys along. So, yeah to that first chain we did. Just like that. Now on chain three, and this acts as our first double crochet. <laughs> she's just a cute gal. She's, yeah. she's just shedding, it's fine. So this is the hat so far. I think I'm going to wait to like get the brim on just because I would like him to try it on just to make sure it fits before I commit to like finishing the hat off. Again, lots of ends to weave in still, but um, this is how the hat looks. I'm gonna switch gears and do some clay stuff. I've been wanting to get into clay for a while and I have a lot of analysis paralysis with it. I think I've just been making a lot of bad stuff and I'm sensitive to making bad stuff and being bad at a skill. So I've just kind of been privately bad at making clay stuff but I'm gonna just be publicly bad with it and like take you guys along on my little clay journey. I'm thinking in my mind, at the very least I have like a clay 
kids craft kit so I'll have something to kind of hold my hand throughout the process but yeah we'll see how it goes <laughs> So this donut is not amazing. I don't know why, but the directions were like, make teeny tiny like balls and like put them onto the donut instead of like making them more cylindrical, which I'm sure was just probably like the easier thing for a beginner to do. But it is made. I made a little guy and not the prettiest donut, but I feel the same way that I felt when I made my first donut in Blender. And like, if you know, you know, like that is typically people's first project when they're learning 3D. So it's just funny that it's come full circle for me. Like instead of modeling this in 3D, I'm modeling it in real life. We've got our fugly donut, but I'm really proud that I made it.